What's happening guys? Jim the Game Guru. Okay, today role player. We're gonna get into some role player. I have both the expansions for role player. We got monsters and minions here. We got fiends and familiars over there. And this is the game that you build the best character possible with reputation stars. The person with the most at the end of the game wins. Take a look at the box. I mean, really, really cool looking box. I love the artwork in this game. I absolutely love the quality. The quality of the components in this game is just absolutely amazing. From the box, to the cardboard cutouts, to the, the, the actual individual cards, to the dice. This game uses dice when you're building your character. I mean, like, like I said, quality. You hear that? You hear that quality right there? The, the box on these, these boxes are so hard. They're so like solid. And like the colors on the cards just pop. They did not spare any expenses when it comes to the ink on the box and on the cards. And I'm gonna dig in, show you the components. We'll do a little quick overview of how the game is played. If you guys are new here, please consider subscribing or following. So I'm gonna start off showing the components of the base game before I actually move on to the expansions. So first thing I'm gonna show you guys in this black baggie here, as you can see, I'm gonna show you guys the dice. The all, and There's tons and tons and tons of dice that come in this game. I mean, you can see them all right here. I mean, look at these. Lots of yummy, delicious dice. And they're all in different colors. So in the middle here, we have some character sheets here. Let's go through each one of these. These are double-sided sheets here. So these character sheets will actually have a female side and a male side. So here we have a human and we have an elf. We have a dwarf. We have an orc, a dragon king, and a halfling. So those are all the types of races that we have in the base set. And then when you flip it to the other side, as you can see here, we have the human. So this particular one, the human looks like Jesus right there. So we have the human, uh, and then we have the elf male version. Uh, there we have the halfling male version, and the dragonkin, and orc, and the dwarf. Let's go ahead and go over the actual boards and what they what the each thing means on the board the anatomy of the board so what we have here in the middle is we have attributes for your character and then there's there's specific holes in here as you can see because dice will end up filling all of your attributes here and what happens is every player in this game is going to fill up every single attribute all the way the game will not end until everyone has filled up their entire stat sheet you have strength dexterity constitution intelligence wisdom and charisma on your board each one of these attributes actually has a special power whenever you place a single die in either of the rows strength will allow you to flip a die from the value it's facing on the top to the value on the bottom. So like a one becomes a six. Uh, dexterity allows you to switch two different die, the location of two different die. Constitution allows you to flip one die to an increased value by one or a decreased value by one. Intelligence allows you to re-roll a single die. Wisdom allows you to move the marker that's on your alignment. On your, over here on your left side, you have an alignment spot, and then what's gonna happen is you're gonna put a card there. There's actually a little marker that's gonna be on that card that will control the alignment of your character. So when I say alignment, I'm meaning like neutral, lawful, evil, chaotic, good. Um, so there's various different alignments your character's gonna have, and there will be a little tracker there that will Keep track of that. The charisma over here, you'll end up giving you a token right here. It'll give you one of these tokens. And this token will basically allow you to buy a card from the market at a reduced 
cost. So that's what charisma does. Now over here you have a class and we're going to put a card here that defines our class. Uh, you also have another card that's going to be put here for backstory. I'm going to show you the cards for classes and backstory here shortly. And what these do is like the backstory kind of gives you a little bit of a backstory behind your character. So it's a very short backstory. It's not very long. And your, your class is going to be something like rogue, sorcerer, warrior, or something like that. See, on the sides here, what you're going to have is you're going to have a place to put your skill cards. So every time you get skill cards for your character, you put them on the left side. Anytime you get weapons, you can put your weapon cards on the right side. And armor goes over here on the right side as well. And then there's something at the bottom for traits. All your trait cards will actually be put down here below your player mat. So you can see how cool it is by having so much customization for your character, from your attributes, to your class, to your backstory, to your weapons, your armor, your traits, your skills, and your alignment. I was actually surprised it had so much. I knew this game, before going into this game, I knew it had these for the attributes. And I knew that it had something for the class. I was actually surprised on the alignment and some of the skill stuff. I, I was not expecting that. So it's actually delivered more than I thought. Okay, so there that is the player mat. Let's go into some of the cards. Let's go into the market cards. Now these are gonna be market cards that you're gonna put down there and you're gonna be able to buy them from the center. Every, every person that has a lower initiative gets first dibs on the market cards when they go to buy them. So we have famous here, envious, courageous, dedicated. These are all traits. You're gonna end up putting them on the bottom of your, your character map. Diplomacy is a skill, uh, but you can see the colors. Look at the colors on the cards, just absolutely amazing. Then we have leather pauldron here, which is armor, leather gloves, leather boots, leather greaves. Uh, mystic cloak, mystic robes, mystic cow, chain leggings, chain tunic, chain helm, chain vambresses, sleight of hand, which is a skill, and then we have cure wounds, knowledge, move silently, these are all skills, intimidate, climb, open lock, acrobatics, pickpocket, negotiate, search, concentrate, obnoxious, loyal, honest, greedy, these are all tr um, some, some traits here, cunning, obsessed, compassionate, focused, reckless, foolish, clumsy, weak, proud, nimble, honorable, steadfast, heavy crossbow, quarterstaff, we're getting some weapons here, ancient spear, tower shield, longbow, jewel dagger, blessed mace, and long sword. So really cool. Now, every single weapon will have the number of hands it's required to be able to use it. So this has one, 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 There's gonna be, this one right here being a longbow has two hands. You can only have two maximum weapons on your character at a time because you can't go beyond the two hands required in order to hold the weapons. And when you get into things like, tra like traits and skills, so with this trait, you notice a little error on the very top, right? So up here we have the cost of the card, which is six. And then on the little arrow there, that arrow tells you the alignment shift on your character when you buy this card. So if I were to buy this card, the alignment's gonna shift to the right. And different traits will have alignment shift. So this trait here, it shifts to the left. That one shifts to the left. And skills also do the same thing. Let me go to skills. So whenever you use a skill, because you don't have to use it right away when you buy the skill, because then the skill becomes part of your character. But whenever you use the skill, it will shift the alignment by the arrow on the left side of that colon. So traits and skills always shift your alignment. Now, whenever you use a skill, you're gonna end up tapping it. So, and what do I mean by tap? So like if you have a card down like this and you end up using a skill, you're gonna end up tapping it. So just like in Magic the Gathering. And then later on, what's gonna happen is during the cleanup phase at the very end, you're gonna end up, you can untap one of your skills. All right, let's take a look at some of the other cards here. These right here are initiative cards. Now what you have one, two, three, four, five. And now what these are is you're gonna put, you're gonna end up putting a, a single die on these cards and then people are going to pick 
initiative cards based on the die that they want. The reason why these initiative cards are kind of important is because the, the people with the lowest initiative will actually get first dibs at the market when they get when, later on when you actually get, you can buy cards in the market. So let's take a look at some of the classes. These class cards are actually double sided. So we have sorcerer, we have rogue, we have cleric, we have bard, we have ranger and warrior. And now I have to flip it over. I'm gonna tell you what the, what the stars mean in a second. We have barbarian. We have uh, Druid, Monk, Paladin, Thief, and Wizard. Now, what do these little stars things here at the um, the class mean? What these classes have is they have goals. So here's the class color for the Barbarian. It's a red. So you're gonna you know you're gonna have this red wooden kind of tracker for it. Certain die will also have to match this color to get bonuses on your attributes. But you have to have certain cards that actually explicitly say that. Here, you're gonna have goals for each of your attributes for your strength. So with Barbarian for strength, you need anywhere from 16 to 17 at the end of the game in order to have two stars, in order to earn two stars, reputation stars. Dexterity, you have to have 17, exactly 17. Not 17 and over, exactly 17 in order to get three stars. Constitution, you have to have 18 and over, you get three stars. Intelligence, 14 and over, you get one star. Wisdom, you have to have 14 or 15 to get two stars. And then Charisma, 14 or over to get one star. This 16 and 17 on strength, what does that mean? So on your character board, when you put your three die here, they need to add to 16 or 17 for strength for that particular class. And the same goes for the other attributes. Uh, let's take a look at some of the backstories. So here's your backstories, which is really cool. So we have the aristocrat, we have the brawler, we have the chosen one, you have the craftsman, you have the exonerated, you have the hunter, you have the mentor, you have the patrician, the rift walker, you devoted, lost soul, persecuted, resilient, savage, savant, savant, street urchin. Now, if you notice these cards will have different colors, and what happens is on your character sheet, if you have these colored die in the right spot that's pictured here on this kind of this diagram, you will end up matching what's on this card for additional points. So this aristocrat says, it says for any two to three matches, you get one additional star. Any four to five matches, you get three stars. And six matches, if you match all six, you get an additional six reputation stars. So backstories, like I said earlier, backstories will end up going right here. So that's what it looks like on there. And then a class will end up going up here. So that's how that's kind of how you set your character. Let's go into the alignment cards. These ones are really, really cool. On the four sides of each of the alignment cards, you have lawful, you have good, you have chaotic, and you have evil. So hermit is good for being right in the middle, actually. You don't want to go on any of the corners with hermit. Neurotic, you want the very bottom left for toward evil. Eccentric, we have protector, we have scoundrel, arbiter, lunatic, renegade, free spirit, rebel, sociopath, champion, narcissist, sentinel, guardian, maniac, and truth seeker. So these are all different alignments. And what you wanna do is you wanna get bonus points at the end of the game by having your alignment tracker in the right spot. So that actually changes your direction sometimes when you're buying the market cards because you're gonna want cards that kind of end up shifting the alignment to a good spot, the alignment tracker to a good spot on your alignment where you can get bonus points at the end of the game. Over here we have some wooden cubes for each of the players. You know, white, black, blue, green, purple, and red. So each player gets two of a particular color. What else is in the game? We have coins in the base game too. Got some lovely delicious coins. You're gonna use that as your goal to buy the skills, traits, and weapons and stuff. Over here, we've got a reference cards, and this kind of tells you like the play sequence. So it tells you how it, you know every single play sequence, the rounds, and then it also has little stars here where you can track your total stars that you get at the very end of the game. Now that is everything in the base game. So let's dig into some expansions. Okay, so let's get into monsters and minions. I mean, the box, like I said before in the intro, the box to these, um, to the base set and to these expansions are very, very, very high quality. I mean, they're like solid. Like, I mean, it's 
beautiful. I was not expecting this high of a quality from this game. I'm gonna be absolutely honest. A lot of times, a lot of board game companies will cut corners, but in this one right here, they actually uh, spent some good money on production, which I, I thoroughly appreciate. Okay, so let's get into some additional character cards that you get. So you get a Dark Elf, so if you're into the Drow, there you go. Gnome, we've got a Beast character. Construct, I guess it's kind of like a, like a golem or a metal humanoid. And then you have the Wrathborn. Very, very cool. So these ones uh, are additional characters you get from this expansion. This expansion, the Monsters and Minions one, will actually expand the game to five players as well. The base game of role players is for four people. This will actually expand it for a fifth player. Now you have additional dice in this game. So you have these ones right here. These are actually combat die. You roll them in combat scenarios because in this game you can actually have combat with minions or a big monster at the end. Uh, there's also a white dice that look like this. These are bonus die. And if you notice, what do you think is weird on that? There are more than six dots. Yeah, so these die will actually have more than six. You can roll them to get bonus uh, values. Let's go into some of the monster cards here. We've got, now if you notice there's two different versions of every single monster, because one of them, I believe one of them is for the regular play and the other one's for solo play, I think. Um, I can't remember right now. I believe one of them is for the uh, solo mode. Okay, so we got the Chimera. We have the Demon. We've got the Dragon. We have the Giant Troll. Again, I love the artwork in this game. We have the Kraken, the Vampire. And then we have an updated play sequence because this game adds additional rules to the base game, especially when it comes to fighting the, mon the minions and, and using the combat die, etc. So your play reference card is much bigger than it was for the base game that the smaller ones. And look, and you can see, because this is an expansion and adds more to the game, you're gonna have more victory points. The base game only went to 40. This one is going all the way up to 55. Each expansion for this game is gonna add more when it comes to the weapons and the skills and the traits and the armor. All right, so first I believe this is gonna start off with the market stuff. There we go. So let's flip through some of these markets. As you can see, nice artwork. Again, beautiful artwork. So this is gonna give you more weapons. Here are some more traits. I mean, I just love the print in this game. It's just awesome. Skills, and then this one also adds scrolls. So it adds scrolls to the game, which is cool. So you have scrolls that you can use for one-time effects. There we go, scrolls, and we have additional traits. And then we have additional weapons, another scroll. And then now let's dig into some of the backstory. So in this one we have Apprentice. Cast off, gatekeeper, separated, damaged, doomed, gladiator, lost in time, uh, oracle, outcast, transported, wanderer. Those are all the backstories. Now let's get into some of the classes. We have a warlord, elementalist, alchemist, crusader, assassin, illusionist. So those are some of those. And again, they're double-sided. So that means... We have Enchanter on the side, Scout, Priest, Psionic, Shaman, and a Knight. Okay, so you choose which one you want when you set up the game. So let's go into some of the initiative cards. Since this game goes up to five players now, the initiative cards change, right? Because you have it up to six. Because in the game, you always have the number of players plus one. So this will give you the six card that you need. And then we have Goblin here for some, we're gonna get to some of the minions here. Giant Spider, Phantom, Elemental, Null, Bandit, Ogre, Direwolf, Cultist, uh, Satyr, Bugbear, Zombie, Gargoyle, Harpy, Wormling, Hobgoblin, Skeletal Rider, Giant Serpent, Basilisk, Ooze, Owlbear, Will-O-Wisp, Giant Scorpion, Displacer, Giant Rat, and Cobalt. All right, so now let's go ahead and dig into the other expansion, which is Fiends and Familiars. Now, this one is really, really cool. This one's going to add additional monsters and minions, and it's also going to add familiars that you add next to your class your character. So not only are you gonna have your characters, but you're also gonna have little familiars that are gonna be with you that you can actually put die into their slots. Really, 
really, really cool. So here we got a leopard, a uh, tempest fox, ancient tortoise, scorch phoenix, horned viper, blood badger. And let's go into the other ones here. And they give you a lot of familiars. Flame imp, a shadow drake, a cursed raven, a jackalope. <laughs> a jackalope, I love that. All right, and then what do we have over here? We have an ice bear. We have a screech owl, draggle wolf, and then we have a silver warthog. And then the last one there is a long-tailed weasel. Long-tailed weasel. Okay, so there's all your familiars. Let's get into some more character cards. Here you go. So yes, more character cards. Like, are you serious? More character cards? Wow. Yeah, so you can see how the expansions add a lot to the game. So we have Kalika here. Uh, what else we got? Sheki. I'm guessing it's Sheki. Shiki, Sheki. Look, looks like some kind of tree folk. Vargar. And we've got a Saurion. Very, 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 very cool. And everything else stays the same as far as the class, backstory, alignment, etc. It's all the same on the cards. Let's go into some monsters. All right, some monsters. So monsters here, again, two versions of each for the different modes of the game. Uh, we have Cyclops, we have a Gorgon, we have a Griffin, we have a Hydra, and we have a Leviathan, a Megapede, and then you have updated play sequence again. Now let me show you some dice here. This has additional die that are different. I don't know what this one does. And it does have combat die just like the monster one right here but I don't know what these ones are yet. I haven't actually read up on this expansion yet to see what this, what these, what these particular die do. Uh, let's get into the market cards and stuff. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of these additional classes in this expansion. We have Centurion, Hunter, Beastmaster, Scribe, and Outrider, and Conjurer. And if we flip it to the other side, we have Magician, Seeker, Templar, Tinkerer, Soothsayer, and Fighter. So those are all the new classes in this Fiends expansion. Uh, let's take a look at some of the backstories. We have backstories, we have Artificer, Bookworm, Caretaker, Celestial, Chronologist, Chronologist, Culpable, Dreamweaver, Haunted, Investigator, Split, Tormented, and Unhinged. So those are all of those. And let's take a look at some of the market deck stuff. Uh, looks like we get some more chained gear for armors. We have a Leather Curious, Mystic Gambleson, Gambleson, Runic Bracelet, Runic Crown, R Runic Signet, Clarity, Restore, Charm, and Trap. These are some of the skills, additional skills. You have additional traits, Devious, Friendly, Resolute, and then we have some more weapons here. Ancient Tome, Glaive, Harpoon, Scabbard, Short sword, war lance, and you have some more armor. Runic, uh, was this a runic amulet, runic necklace, runic pendant, brimstone for a scroll, domesticate for a scroll, exile scroll. We have examine for a skill, manipulate, sense evil, speculate, subvert, summon. You have some traits here: cruel, exalted, relentless, ruthless, stalwart, backpack for a weapon, and spiked shield for another one of those weapons now when it comes to armor in this game you can have infinite amount of armor yes you can have two chest plates if you want it doesn't really matter the only limitation is when it comes to the weapons so for these minions here on this one you have bat swarm cockatrice crocodile giant beetle giant crab golem hellhound ice worm mimic mummy vile dryad doppelganger drog fungoid Gremlins, Naga, Sandworm, Tree Folk, Tyrannosaur, Wendigo, a Were Shark, Werewolf, and a Wraith. So these are all of like your little minions that get added. Absolutely cool expansion. All right, let's get into a quick how to play on this. This game is very, very, very simple. The mechanics are very simple. The part of this game that is is the challenge is maximizing your points by having the right dice value on your character sheet based on your alignment, based on your class, based on your backstory, and trying to match all of these as much 
as you can. That is where the challenge is. But as far as the turns, the rounds, and, and what you do in them, it's very, very easy. It's one of those games that's simple to learn, but really hard to master because you need to get certain amount of points. Now, I think in the base game, if you get to about 38 points or more, then you played phenomenal. With the expansion, it's going to be a lot more than 38 points, obviously, because there's more there there are, there are more opportunities to get reputational stars um, based off of the different types of things like fighting minions and stuff. But as far as the base game, if you get 38 points, you're actually pretty you're a rock star. Now let's take a look and see how we've got things aligned up. We have a human male right here. We have uh, the initial starting die that that, per that that player has already placed their, their die in the spots that they want. This person is actually a rogue and their backstory is they're a savage and their eccentric is their alignment. Now, every player will actually end up putting a tracker in the middle of their alignment to be able to track that whenever they're buying certain cards or using skills etc now we have this over here a female elf she is a paladin she has is the chosen one as far as the backstory and she's a free spirit on her alignment we every player starts off with five gold this person up here has more and why do they have more gold because anytime you fill up an entire row you'll you will automatically get one gold and anytime you actually gain a gold die and put a gold die on your sheet you gain two gold and the other way to gain gold is if you take an initiative card that already has a gold token on it so when you set up the games the initiative cards are going to be the number of players plus one and the market cards is going to be the same thing the number of players plus one we have our gold supply we have our charisma tokens that you get whenever you use an ability on your charisma row we have the marker here with these three cards how does the round play so first we have the starting player down here and what they did was they rolled three dice in order to put the three dice on the initiative card so that's what we've already done and then you have to put the dice in the order from left to right smallest to largest in order to fill up each one of these initiative cards now if you ever have a tie like here we have two fives you choose where you want to put that die now the in this case both die are white so it really didn't matter but it may matter if these are different colors and you're trying to get a different color on your on your on your character sheet and you want to put a certain die where you want so that's the benefit of being the first player you choose on ties where the dice actually go and as well as you're the first player to go on the round but this bag which is your first person marker this bag full of dice will end up going to the player to your left on the next round, and then they will become the first player. Okay, so the very first thing you do on the round when you start, so we have this person right here who's the elf. They are going first. So what are they going to do first uh, as far as picking initiative cards? So you have to ch pick an initiative card. What they may end up doing is they might just go ahead and go for the two. Now they chose the, the second initiative card, so they get they get this white die, and then they also get this gold coin. So this gold coin is gonna go to yum, 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 their bank right over here. Then this person goes, and now they gotta decide what initiative card do they want. Do they want a one or they want a three? Now if they get a three, they their initiative's higher, so they get second pick at the market. But in this case, they might just go ahead and choose one, so they get first crack at the market. The lower the initiative, the first dibs you get on the market. That means in this two player game, that one initiative card stays back. This is gonna be unused. No one's going to get that. Now we go into the placement. So now we're in the dice phase of this round. So this person's going ahead and pick, uh, where are they gonna put it? So they have a five. Now they gotta look on these classes and their backstory to see where they can put certain dice to match certain things. Um, you know, maybe they'll just go ahead and they will, um, I don't know, they'll, maybe they'll put a five here. By putting a five here, it is in the strength attribute, which means they can use now the strength ability since they placed it there. Strength ability is to be able to flip any die on its opposite side. So that's what she's gonna do. She's gonna go ahead and say, okay, I'm gonna flip this one 
purple to a six purple on the constitution row. Now, whenever you flip the die or move the die around on other rows, you don't get to use additional abilities. You can only use one ability when you place one die on your stat sheet. That's it. There aren't, there's no, a, there's no combo of abilities unless you use like a skill card or something else. This person's gonna go, did they gain their two gold from that? I don't know. Well, they're gonna go ahead and place their coin here. They get, they gain an automatic two gold. Anytime you get a gold die and you place it on your board, you gain two gold. So they're gonna go ahead and, I don't know, maybe they'll put it down here on their charisma. They will use their ability to gain a charisma token. This charisma token right here which allows them to buy a market card cheaper. And here's the question. Can you save these charisma tokens? No, you cannot. You cannot save these tokens. At the end of the round, they go bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye token. So you want to use those every single time when you get to the market. You might as well because you end up losing it anyway. All right, so now we're done. The dice placement on this dice part of the round. Now we get to the market phase in here. This is when we get to buy a market item. This person has initiative two. This person has initiative one. So this person goes first. What are they going to spend their yummy, yummy gold on? So we have right here, we have two skills and we have a chain tunic. Okay. So let me bring up these market cards so you guys can see them. So we have two skills and we have a chain tunic. So what are they gonna do? So knowledge is increase or decrease the face value of a die on your character sheet by one or two, which is awesome. Acrobatics is plus one face value to one die and, and minus one face value to a different die on your character sheet. That's kind of cool, that might come in handy. And then chain tunic is another armor, you get additional victory points. That's if you get additional chain armor items. And then the more chain armor stuff you get, and you create a set, the better it is. So this, you get victory points. You get more victory points for the more, for a bigger set of chain items, which is cool. And then you also get plus one reputation star if the set is worn by a red or a white class. And unfortunately, that class is a black class. But I think on this person, we're going to spend three gold. We're going to spend the three gold. And they're going to pick up knowledge. Knowledge is a skill. And the skill goes on the left side of the character board. Now, the alignment doesn't change yet. Because remember I said whenever you, you get traits or you use a skill, that's when your alignment changes. So later on, if this person decides to use this skill and tap it, their alignment's going to go to the left. So if they were to use this skill, and they can use it at any time, and tap that skill to use it, their alignment would shift. This says shift their alignment to the left. So their alignment would go to the left. This person does not want their alignment to stay on the left because if they if it does, guess what? They get minus one victory point if that alignment is set there. They want theirs to be to the all the way to the right middle. That's if they decide to use a skill, but they're not gonna use it. So using skill, very, very easy. Tap, move your alignment, that's it. That's how you use a skill. But remember that at the very end of the cleanup phase, you can only untap one skill. The alignment will stay at that particular spot. So you're gonna need to find another way to shift the alignment back because this alignment needs to move in order to use the skill card. If you cannot move the alignment tracker on your alignment card, guess what? You cannot use your skill. It is very, very important to know. This is how they control the abuse of skills so you're not untapping, tap, untap, tap, tap, nonstop and just over uh, over abusing that skill. Um, so this person's gonna go now. So they spent their three, they, we already did that. Okay, so this person's gonna go, what are they gonna buy? I guess they might buy Acrobat because Acrobat is three gold as well. So they're gonna go ahead and buy this and they're gonna put, I'm gonna move this over a little bit, but their skill card goes right there and that's it. So now we get to the cleanup phase of the round. Unused die, go bye-bye, right? This goes right into the bag again. The initiative cards go back. The market cards, bye-bye, any, any, un any unbought market cards, See you later. The initiative card goes back here. So now the all three initiative cards go back. And then we're gonna flip three new market items up, just like that. Now, whenever you're creating this market deck, they say to order them by the dots, by single or double dots. I don't do that because I like pure randomization in the market. So I shuffle everything together so I can get the 
pure random uh, randomization. Now this goes to this player right here. So now they are the first player. And then we get into the next round. So what happens first? And I, and I think I've, I've cleared everything out. Let me see. Um, oh, you know what? I got to put a gold from the supply into this because any initiative card that is not on the left, far left, or the far right gets a gold on it. So this person over here is going to start off the next round. And what they do is they pull out three die for each of these. Now we have blue, green, and a red die. They're going to go ahead and, and roll them. So now we have a two, three, and a five. So the two green is first. The three is second, and then the five is last. And you can see, because you got to put them in order. You have to put them in order. The only time the, the actual, that player actually gets to pick where they go is if there's a tie, then they can choose what color die goes where. And then we go into picking initiatives. So there's, see, the higher die on the later initiative creates this kind of pull and push type of thing where you're like, man, I really want the five die for my character sheet. But then again, I want first dibs on the market. Oh my God, what do I do? And that's what I love about this game. So what they might do here is, I don't know, maybe they'll go ahead and choose three just so they can get the five die. So this person gets the, the third initiative for the five. This person here is gonna go next. They're gonna go ahead and choose the two die. I mean, might as well, because it has a gold on it. And they're, and they're automatically get first dibs because that's the highest card here as far as initiative. Then we go into the dice where we place the dice. So this person's going to put their five down. Where are they going to put it? Um, uh, I don't know. Maybe right here in strength. And then they're going to use their strength ability. And then they're going to... Oh, you know what? This charisma token was never used on the last round. Boo! And, and, and that was right after I said, always use it during the round or else it's gone. How stupid of me. Um, okay. So here we go. He's going to use a strength bonus and he, or, or ability. He's going to turn this one into a six on his wisdom row. Now this person's going to go and then they're going to go ahead. So now if they fill up the strength, it's going to be three in a row. So that has been filled out. So then they'll, this person will actually get a gold uh, token for that. But I don't know if I want to put that there. Let's do this. Let's put it right here in the constitution. Constitution's ability is any die can go up by one or down by one. And I'm going to make this four into a five right there. Okay, perfect. So you got to know the abilities and you got to know what you can do with those abilities. This person gets first dibs on the market. And here we go. You got three, three items. You have one of them that's armor. We have an ability and we have a weapon. What is this weapon? When any player discards a card from the market, gain one gold. Now, what does that mean, discards? Well, you don't have to to buy a card from the market if you don't want to. You could actually select a card and trash it instead of buying something. You will gain gold for trashing it. And then if I had this weapon right here on this, this will allow me the that ability so whenever anybody did that and they, they did not buy something, they trashed it, guess what? I would gain something for that, which is really cool. And then we have this ability called search, which is search the dice bag, and exchange one die on your character sheet with a new die with the same face value. That is actually really, really cool. You know what? Maybe I'll spend four for that. So they will spend four. They will gain another skill right here. Now this skill moves my alignment up and this skill moves my alignment to the left. Now, what is this person going to buy? They have a shit ton of gold. Uh, they have some armor here uh, that can give them some victory points. And then they have that m blessed mace. You know, I don't know, maybe they'll spend two gold and just buy the blessed mace. And then they'll put this weapon right here on the right side. And that's it. There you go. Now we're, we're done the market phase. We're into the cleanup phase, right? Cleanup. Bye-bye. Bye bye die. Uh, initiative cards go back. And then this person gets the bag back. Now they are the first player again. And that is how you play role player. The complexity in this game is not the actual actions. The complexity is trying to find a way. Because this, this basically this character sheet is like a puzzle. It's trying to find a way to get this puzzle to align with all of your cards perfectly that you can maximize your points. And that also makes this game an actually really good solo player game too, because there's a solo mode to this. 
Anytime you have some kind of puzzle element in a game, it's great for solo play. That is the challenge in this game. How do I maximize my points? I, I think it's super awesome. I love the theme, and I think you can play with anybody. Any, any, any kind of family members that are, you know, into board games and stuff, I think you can easily play with most family members of this game because it's not that hard to understand the the rules of it down here there, you would have traits on your character sheet but i didn't buy any traits from the market and nothing there were no traits actually you know what during the cleanup phase three cards come up oh and there you go and there's a first trait right there that somebody would be able to possibly be able to buy it this person might be able to because they have a lot of gold that's how you guys play it it's awesome uh, but that's role player if you like this video please like and i will see you guys later on the next video bye guys